let me preface this with I have Fred Flintstone feet, so really flat, really wide. So sometimes when I go to put on my underwear now, my little toe will get stuck. And it's like I sort of start to fall. <laughs> like I have to catch my balance. <laughs> Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the podcast that finally brings the over 50 gay male voice back into the conversation. We've been talking about all the different relationships that affect gay guys like us over 50. And today it's all about change and the various changes that gay guys over 50 have to deal with. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And Michael, change is inevitable. Life is constantly changing, but some people, like, thrive on it, and other people abhor it, and other people hide from it, and other people are pretending it's not ever happening. Where do you fall on this change scale? I mostly love change, um, because it forces us to be more than we were before. And I've always embraced that. Um, And sometimes it's incredibly painful um, and challenging. But usually when you get to the other end, you could sort of sit there and go, oh, I get it. Okay, good. How about you? Uh, Well, you know, this, this is something that I have dealt with since I was a kid. I, one of my big life learning messages, whatever, that I constantly look back at happened when I was, I don't know, maybe eight or nine years old. And I had an older sister who was going to spend Thanksgiving with her boyfriend's family. And it set me off. I was in my bedroom sobbing like, no, it, because we're all supposed to be together. It was, it was going to be the, a big change for me. And my mom came into the, my bedroom, sat on my bed and was like, doesn't matter what you want. Life is always going to be changing and you're going to have to get used to it. Yeah, and absolutely. And I still, to this day, if something's changing and I'm not happy about it, I can hear my mother's voice. I can see myself sitting in that bedroom as a child and go, yeah, okay. All right. I have to let go of this. You know, I can't control. that, That what you just brought up, I think, is a good way to help us embrace change is to if you do feel that moment of sadness or grief um to embrace it and allow yourself not necessarily to really cry but if you want to cry cry <laughs> yeah. because it helps get stuff out right and it, it 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 it's sort of it helps us bridge the gap between what was and what is coming and well, so i the- think embracing those emotions is hugely important Exactly. We we discussed that a lot when we talked about our relationship with our mental health. And, and that was a big thing that just acknowledgement of this is happening. And now I have to deal with it instead yeah. of spiraling away. Um, but, you know, change doesn't just happen for old gay guys like us. It's it happens for absolutely everybody out there. Old, absolutely. young, gay, straight, doesn't matter what color you are, what size or shape you are, life is going to change. But today, you and I are going to discuss some of those changes that really do, do affect old gay guys, I guess. Um, and it starts with the whole aging process, which, you know, from day one, tick, 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 that aging right? process has happened, you know, is happening. So, but I think that's something for a lot of us gay gentlemen, um, dealing with the whole aging process, because whether we like it or not, as my mom said, it's going to happen. Our bodies are just going to keep aging and keep changing, and we are not the vital, vibrant, young bucks that we used to be, you know, and really doesn't matter how much we take care of us. I mean, it does matter how much we take care of ourselves, but it's still, there are going to be these changes, you know? And there's, you know, along with the physical, there's also the emotional and mental changes that we go through as we age. And um, embracing all of those things, I think, helps us all to move forward. But I think the hardest part, I know for me, I'm going to, you know, step up and say, yeah, 
is a lot of this aging with the body where we're like, what the hell just <laughs> happened to me? You know, like, do you ever look at yourself in the mirror and go like, who the fuck is that? Well, we've touched base on this, I think, in the past. We have very different experiences with our physical perceptions. Um, so for me, I've done that since I was a kid. I look in the mirror and go, what the fuck is that? You know, and <laughs> sort of see Quasimodo when I look at myself. Right. So maybe that's a plus for me as I've been getting older because I don't really focus on that a lot. Right. Um, well, I, I just still, I still, you know, see my tremendous love handles, but that's always been so. Um, well, I mean, yes, we have established that there is no one more delusional than I am. But, but I have to tell you, one of my absolute newest, best friends in life is my 10 times magnifying mirror that I have in my bathroom and my tweezer. I don't know about you. <laughs> But hairs are popping up places that they're not supposed to be. No. What the fuck is with the hair on the end of the nose? Oh, well, I, I don't get got, that. I haven't gotten those things. Oh, you're lucky. Thank you're lucky. Like every Lord. once in a while, I'm like, what the fuck? And there's this hair. I'm like, where the I, fuck did that come from? I will like touch my ear and be like, what, what is that? And like go in there, find it, tweeze it out. And then like 10 minutes later, there's one that's like seven inches long. Like, where did you come from? <laughs> that's Crazy. so funny you brought that up because the, the, the guy who just cut my hair said to me, and this was bizarre because it was out of the blue and it's not, again, not something I think about because I don't get hair in my ear. He said, you won the ear hair lottery. And I went, what does that mean? Yeah. He goes, you have no ear hair. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. No, I mean, there are, as we see, a lot of older gentlemen with those like bushes coming out of their yeah. ears i mean thank god i don't have that either but if i see one i am running to my magnifying mirror and getting rid of it that but that also happens like you and i also really won a great lottery with the hair on our heads seriously um but you know my husband is one of those guys who has lost his hair and that was so traumatic you know for him as it is with most guys but it's so I don't know, you might see this because you're out there with dating a lot more men than I am, obviously. But the men who are losing it on their heads, it's sprouting up like on their backs and their yeah. shoulders and, you know, everywhere. It's it's the aging process. You oh, know? I, get one of the, I get those random shoulder hairs, too. Where Do you? Seriously, you go to bed at night and there's nothing <laughs> yeah. there and you wake up the next morning and there's a foot and a half long hair. I'm like, what the right. fuck happened overnight? But it's not just hair. Like, all kinds of shit happens overnight. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I have this really, really great friend. Uh, she, I met her in New York. In fact, uh, you know, we've known each other now for eons. Um, she, I might have mentioned this before, she introduces me to people. This is my dear friend, Tom. You should have seen what he used to look like. Wow. Right? Uh... But I love her so much that it's okay. But every time we get together, and it's like once a month we have lunch, we do this like 15 minute process of like, oh my God, look at this. What is this? And then she's Turkey like, have, have you seen the skin on my hand? It looks like I crumpled up tissue paper. I'm like, I know. What is that? It's so much fun to go through the like tick, 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 all these things that have now happened to our bodies. And so do you guys get on like Amazon and, and order crepey race and stuff like that? No, but I mean, <laughs> this thing sees a lot of yeah. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Night. That arm fold thing there. Yeah, right. That or like, even like wow, when you cross your legs and you're like, why? What's happening with my skin there? Uh, it's just nuts. I mean, I but guess also, we should be grateful that we could still cross our legs. So and that we still have skin. You right. know, yes, there are a lot of things to be grateful for, but. It, it's also, like you said, just acknowledging this stuff and go like, you know what? Okay. So yeah, this is who I am now. Life is changing and it's probably not going to get any better. So today is, I'm looking as good as I'm ever going to look, you know, unless we have tons of work done, which I don't want to do. Um, but yeah, the whole body changing. But that, then there are also those other aspects. I don't, I know you've got some great eyes on you, but I have glasses everywhere in every room in my car in every jacket i can't read anything anymore 
Yeah, I've been fortunate with both the eyes and the ears. Yeah. It's like they're bionic. For I, I, I have friends who always will comment on the acuity, is that the right word, of my hearing. Because I can hear things. Yeah. I'm like Jamie Summers. Um, yeah, and Brilliant. Knock, knock wood, my eyes are still hanging in with no glasses. Yeah, for me, I, I can't even go to the grocery store and like read a package. I, I have to have the glasses. So, you know, that's another change. I never wore glasses. Now I've, I'm getting used to it. It's just the way it is. I know a lot of men our age and definitely older don't have the hearing that you and I have as well. And, you know, what? the hearing aids. What? Yeah. What? I'm sorry. What did you say? <laughs> um, is this thing on? <laughs> yeah. And hearing but, aids are like a, a new, yeah. um, thing with everybody uh and it's i have so to say though i've always found glasses to be sexy well have you, you haven't seen my glasses <laughs> well you my, have like, those really sort of horn rim glasses. ones with the rhinestones on oh no so i have all kinds all kinds <laughs> oh, of yeah, those glasses don't work. all kinds those of are them. cute the little rainbow ones i like yeah those. i mean i just if I've got to do it i'm gonna do it with a little style you know yeah. a little fun but i um, really i really have always thought I don't know why. Guys with glasses, yeah. I'm attracted to. I always thought it was like really cute. Do you remember the movie uh, How to Marry a Millionaire with uh, Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. and uh, was it Ginger Rogers and the one with the deep voice, Lauren Bacall? Men don't make passes at girls, girls who, who wear, wear glasses. glasses. But men do make passes at men who wear glasses. Well, there you go. There you awesome. go. <laughs> well, then I'm going to start wearing my glasses everywhere I go. Right. Uh, yeah, so it's just like all this stuff that's, all these changes our bodies are going through. And instead of fighting it, just, you know, like me, buy some crazy ass glasses and just go with it, you know? Um, yeah, get a little chuckle out of it, right? Right. I mean, you know, you got it. I think that's the thing that needs to grow most as we get older is our sense of humor. Right. Because you just got to laugh sometimes, like, you know, when you go to put on your underwear and you fall over. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> okay, so let me preface this with, I have Fred Flintstone feet, so really flat, really wide. So sometimes when I go to put on my underwear now, my little toe will get stuck. And it's like, I sort of start to fall. <laughs> like I have to catch my balance. And I don't, it's the one little toe on my right foot that gets caught. And I'm like, son of a bitch. And that's a new thing. And okay, it really I, does make me laugh every time I do it. And now I do it, obviously I put on my underwear now next to the bed. So this way, you know, I have something a little soft to fall into. As to like <laughs> that's the bathroom so thing. sad. <laughs> that's so sad. I've never but heard of that. But it makes me laugh. It really okay. does. I'm like, really? Son of a bitch. Great. Um, all right. Well, you know, besides all of this surface stuff, uh, a lot of the changes that our bodies are, are taking on have to do with health. You know, again, you and I are very healthy guys. Uh, knock wood or whatever we need to knock. Uh, but a lot of guys... As they're aging, you know, f more and more health issues are happening and more and more drugs that they have to take and doctors that they have to see. And it's just also going to be a part of life. It's yeah. even if you, you know, have taken really great care of yourself, it just might be in your DNA or the genes that were passed down to you. So, again, just have to kind of deal with it um, the best that you can. Uh, yeah, because I think I think we all are eventually going to experience some sort of health crisis or health issue that um, you, know, you know I heard is going to be a big challenge for us. I was at a dinner party the other night, and it was obviously all gay men from like fifty to eighty something. It was like this big birthday party, and of course, the organ recital started, where everyone starts talking about their failing organs. And then it turned to prostate cancer. And the, I guess, no matter what, every man eventually gets prostate cancer. Uh, it doesn't kill you, but you have it when you die uh, if you get to live long enough. Like, a, okay, great. Wow. Didn't know well, that. I, I, actually, that's interesting because I, I read something years ago about by the time that we, <clears throat> excuse me, um, as we age, at some point, Every single person living on the planet today will experience some sort of cancer just because of everything that's in our yeah. food and our air and 
that, and I was like, oh, that's a depressing thought. Yeah, but, right. You know, it is what it is. It's the environment we've created for ourselves. So again, it's one of those things you just sort of have to go, I'm going to deal with it. After you, you know, scream and cry and grieve, you get on, right? Right. Uh, you, I mean, it's all, uh, everything about is choices. You can choose to fight or you choose, you know, no, you know, I'm not going to. This is what's going to take me out or whatever. Uh, hopefully you all choose to fight. Um, but, okay, so yes, our bodies are aging, our, it, everything's dropping, hairs are popping up everywhere, we're getting illnesses. All right, those are some changes, some big changes that we have to deal with. What are some of the other changes? Uh, you know, we, we had a whole uh, show based on male sexuality, and as we discussed, that changes as our a- as we're aging. And, you know, you have to get on board, like we... We decided, right? Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you're going to be tired. Sometimes it's just not going to happen. You're just not in the mood. It's right. it's okay. Yeah, as you know, as opposed to when we were younger, even if we weren't in the mood, we could rally. Didn't matter where. Didn't matter when. <laughs> we would rally. <laughs> now it's like, it's, remember Joan Rivers' bit about um, her having what was her husband's name? Edgar. Uh, Edgar, Edgar, thank you. Yeah. I, I wanted to say Fang, but I'm like, no, that's Phyllis that's Diller. That's Phyllis Diller, yeah. Um, where she would, uh, it was on her, what becomes a legend most, where like, you know, they would be like, oh, it's our night to have sex. You know, catch me, catch me. Oh, can you catch me tomorrow? Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, we don't really have to do it now. It's fine. Right. Yeah. Uh, survivor's on. Let's just right. wait, okay? Yeah. Um, all right. So besides sexuality, another really big change that men not only gay men, but men over 50 are dealing with, is a change of their identity. And this is basically because most men have lived their entire adult lives with their identity wrapped up into their careers. You know, they have these amazing careers and, you know, working to make money and building companies and whatever, you know, whatever they're doing out there. Their identity is so wrapped up in their career and their work that as they're aging and they start the process of separating from work and then retiring, there's that whole change of, who am I now? Yeah. You know? I got to figure out who this person I've been living with for the last 40 years has been. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that's something that we here in Palm Springs see a lot of because there are a lot of men who are now either retired or in the process of retiring. And it's fun to kind of watch them rediscover who they are now. You know, uh, I'm going to take up this. I'm going to do right. that. I'm, I'm going to take a pickleball. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, take up running, biking, hiking. All um, those things that they could yep. never do because they were working those, you know, dusk till dawn or no, it's the opposite way, uh, you know, career. So they didn't have time to find out actually who they were outside of the work process. So, yeah, that is a humongous change for a lot of men, especially, you know, men like us out there. Uh, that change of identity, finding out who they are now, who they want to be now. Yeah, but how great is it that you get to figure out, you know, who you actually are and you get to discover all these new likes, you know, like you could play pickleball or go hiking or well, yeah. get a bicycle uh, or, go, you know, travel. Yeah, but it's still a huge change, especially for a lot of men who were very high powered, very, you know, uh, those men that were out there shaking the world and making changes to now not be the guy everyone comes to for everything or not be the guy who has the answer of everything. And I think that's also a very difficult change that you have to go through. It's like, you know yeah, what? It feels like you had the rug pulled out from under you and you're, you're like, uh, what do I do now? But wait a minute. I was really important. It's like, right? well, you know what? Now you're just one of us. Uh, or you, st- you, you still are important, but now you get to be important in your own life. There and you not go. working for a company or, you know, spent bre- sweating for somebody else. You get to do it all on your own and all for you. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a fun one, I think, is that rediscovering who be. we are. Could be, definitely. Um, so, 
besides, you know, having to have your entire identity wrapped up in um, your career, I think a lot of people, especially over 50, who've been in relationships for a really long time, their identity is being part of a relationship. And as we see in every world, whether gay or straight, a lot of loss is happening. And yes. so we're also losing our identity, who we were with somebody else. Uh, not only death, but also divorce, even just breaking up, uh, moving on, trying to, you know, uh, that's a and huge And we were talking change. about this the other day, that like both of us know a number of people who right now are going through divorces. It feels like there's something in the air here. And, um, you know, breakups and... That's that's a that's a rough road to hoe, and right. the older we get, I think, the more comfortable we get if we are coupled with someone. So to rediscover who you are outside of that relationship, um, yeah. Well, you know, divorce challenge. is such a a hugely new thing to the gay community because we just got the chance to marry yeah. each other. So, yeah, that's they're like the guys that are going through divorces are kind of going through some uncharted territory as gay men, because that was not laid out for us, right. especially as children, or even, you know, people that have divorced parents have, have watched that. It's different for the gay community. Um, yeah, it really wasn't so, yeah. something we ever had to, to grapple with, because, you know, break, you would have breakups, and you both could just walk away cleanly. Now there's, you know, all this legal stuff involved, and th that separation that... Uh, yeah. And we don't have our peers to fall back on because, like you said, it is a new experience for our community. Right. Yeah. One of our friends are getting, a couple of friends are getting divorced and they have humongous properties all over the country. And, you know, there's so much more that goes to it than just like, yeah, we're done. See ya. Bye. I'm taking yeah. my toothbrush and going. Uh, there's a lot that goes through that. Um, but also that we're seeing, you know, as we're aging here, we are going to lose a lot of couples through, uh, death. Um, one of my neighbors, 55 years old, his husband just dropped dead with a brain aneurysm. You know, they were planning this life of retirement together and well, talk about having the rug. Yeah. Pulled How out long were they together? Video. Uh, that I don't know exactly sure, but you know, the, he's 55, the husband I think was over 60, at least maybe 20 years. Wow. So, you know, yeah, long time to one. be together and to have that rug pulled out from under you, really a huge change, especially when you, you saw your future. This was the path we were on. This is what we were going to be doing. Right. Nope. Here's a big change you have to deal with. Mm. Uh, it's, it's rough, you know, uh, another couple or, a, well, this is great. Uh, a w really close friend of mine got divorced, gay couple. They got divorced. He is now with a guy who lost his first partner, um, through death. They had been together for 40 years, crazy. Um, and then that husband died. And so now they're together. Obviously they're guys that like to be a part of a couple, but I think if you've, been a couple for a very long time if you lose that spouse not only are you losing the identity of being the couple but now you're like who am i um yeah because we discussed this before with you where you were like i'm not sure if i could handle the dating scene again if god forbid something oh happened my god i do, i i don't and, think yeah so. i couldn't even imagine having to experience that again after 35 yeah. years of not dating because it really has changed a lot that it that that's a uh, that just seems like such a insurmountable challenge, but right? you know, but it's not. It just like what we were saying. It just depends on how you perceive this new change in your life, and hopefully, you know, we we're resilient beings that uh, we're, we're capable of getting back up and trying something new and different. Right. Well, I, I, and we're all here for each other. You know, that's the great thing that we, if we have built support systems, our families of friends who, you know, if I needed to do that, I, I would 
definitely come to you, the guy who dates more than anybody I know, uh, to hmm. kind of <laughs> <laughs> To kind of like help me out. Like, what do I do? I mean, we all, those of you who have been watching us, and if you're not, get over to YouTube, find our channel, which is No Two Gays About It, the number two, and click and subscribe and hit that little bell so anytime we have a new episode, you can watch us. But those of you that have been following us, you know, you have seen how Michael is teaching me all kinds of things about the dating apps <laughs> because I have no clue about any of that stuff that's out there. It's funny. Yeah, because you, you know? don't even remember chat rooms because you were coupled way back when. Yeah, who was chatting? Um, it's funny. Again, I mentioned earlier that I had been at this big dinner party with uh, gay couples, all from like 50 to 80 years old. Um, and they've all been coupled forever. This one couple were are having their 50th anniversary, which is fantastic. Another yeah. couple is at 47. You know, we're at 36. Another one was at 38. Uh, but they, we were kind of talking about that. Like, we don't know what's going on out there. We don't know how to use these apps. And, and it all stemmed I'm going to come because, with the PowerPoint. Okay, yeah, that would uh, be great. For, at your next dinner party. And we'll just, I'll be the entertainment. That would give be them a fantastic. rundown on wolves and flames and... All that. Yeah, I, I am still. Oh, okay, let's not go all those places because there are some things I'm la 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 trying to forget. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, so a big change is happening, uh, and we've heard this through a lot of our listeners um, have been writing us letters about things that are affecting them, changes that they're that are affecting them, and you know we both talked about some of these guys who have have experienced change of loss through divorce, through uh, death. And, you know, it, it's a lot to take on. Yeah. Especially when all these other changes are happening, the aging process and health processes and, you know, our skin drooping and hairs popping up. And then you you have to deal with some really major changes of loss. It, it's yeah, loss is, loss is a tough one. And it's, it's strange because I think the older we get, you would think it would get easier, but it doesn't seem to. Yeah, it it that's that's one thing that's a constant. I think as far as loss goes, it doesn't it doesn't ever get easier when you lose somebody. Right, right. Um, it's a tough thing to go through. Yeah, but you know, let's not dwell here on on some unhappiness. I'm going to ask you, Michael. Tell me one really positive change that people like us, our age, older gay guys are, are, you know, experiencing. What's a, what's a positive change that you've experienced? Positive change for me was leaving Los Angeles and coming to Palm Springs because I knew that there was more of a community for the LGBTQ plus folks out there. Right. That, you know, we're over 50% of the city and think as we get older, that is something that is very important, that we're, we're surrounded by people who are like us. Um, at least it is for me. That, that, was, that was really on the sort of top of my list of why I was leaving LA, because I didn't feel like there was a gay community there anymore, or a community that you felt comfortable in, you know, where even like West Hollywood, you know, to walk down the street holding somebody else's hand became, I don't want to say I felt unsafe, but I didn't feel safe. Yeah. And, you know, here we could be who we are, which I think as we get older is hugely important to our, our, our sense of self. You know, I think it's important to, to, to live in a place where we could be ourselves as we are aging. And that community is here. And that I'm incredibly grateful for. Great. Yeah. Right. How about, so how that, about you? That's what's a great what, change? Yeah, I think it is. How about uh, you? Uh... I think one of the positive changes is in attitude where I don't have to try so hard or I don't have to, like, you know, when I do look down and I see, all right, my incredibly fantastic square chest that used to be 20 inches higher than it is now. All right, you know what? 
what does it matter? You know, to to just have that change of attitude of like, yeah, this is what it is, and I'm just going to go with it. Yeah. It's fine. You know, nobody is looking at me to be perfect. No one's looking at, you know, and if I have some big hair coming out of my ear or sticking out somewhere, okay, that's who I am. I think, and you know, also, now that's all I'm going to do when I'm around is, you now. I'm going to be checking your ears. Well, an ear check. Well, you're not going to see a lot because I'm really going to, I'm doing the whole waxing thing now. So, wow. you know, you can go to places and have those things waxed. Mm. Uh, so Good to know. Because uh, I still am delusional. I always will be delusional. I will always think of myself as that, you know, hot 28 year old. But um, I think the one of the positive changes is that we get to just be us now, you know, like this is who I am. This is what I'm dealing with. If you don't like it, okay, move along. Uh, All that matter is that you like it, right? That's you got right. You got to be comfortable with. Screw everybody else. Exactly. So yeah, I think that's one of the positive changes that we deal with uh, aging. Um, although I, I I don't like the attitude that a lot of people have. It's like, well, I'm old, so I can just say whatever I want to say, or I can just be as a mean person because I'm old. No, that's that's not a good change. That's only so. Uh, Sophia Petrillo is the only one who gets that pass. But you know the thing is with her, and I know I'm not a big watch watcher of that show and big fan of that show like you are, but I now have seen the show a number of times because you talk about it all the time. <laughs> she said that stuff, but she had the biggest heart for all Absolutely. of those women, you yeah. know. And I think those those older gay f- men who are like, "I'm old and I can say what I want." You were mean when you were twenty, you know. You don't just become mean you don't get that change i think the change is that we don't have to hide ourselves anymore that's a positive thing so you know all right so we're old gay guys that have a lot of changes that have happened and that are going to happen and as you said we just have to be ready for it and acknowledge it and that's all you can do you know um not much else we can do Except keep riding the wave, you know, life is fluid. It's constantly moving. It's constantly changing. Get on the raft and go with everybody, you know, otherwise there's just one way to stop it. And, you know, that's through not being here anymore. So let's all just get on the change wagon and be okay with it. Um, All right. So cool. You know what I'm hearing in my head? Three. Come on. Three guesses. It's Jennifer be Holiday. A... Jennifer oh. Holiday. No, I'm going a new route. Jennifer <laughs> okay. Holiday. I am changing. Remember okay. That from Dream Girls. Do you know? I didn't know you when I lived in in. Uh, well, I knew you when I lived in L.A. But when I first moved there, um, I lived on underneath the Hollywood sign because I wanted to live on Beechwood Canyon so I could look up and know where I was. But then from there, I moved into Jennifer's condo. Oh. Um, and also in the hills of Hollywood. So yeah, I knew her. Um, wow, talk about a, a full circle moment. <laughs> right? It was a fantastic, really such a great play. I loved living there. Um, that's also when I met my husband. Wow. Anyway, oh, uh, so I'm surprised. I thought you were going to go to either a Barry, Barry Manilow or, or a Cher song. So that's great. I could say, uh, do but you yes. believe in life after love? Oh, okay. Which is about change. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Gypsies, Tramps, and Thieves. I have no idea. That's just the only song I could think of. Um, oh, all right, here's let's wait. Move. Here's a, I, I got okay. a quick trivia question. I'm taking a little side road. Um, okay. Do you know who was originally supposed to record the night the lights went out in Georgia? It was offered to her first, and she turned it down, and it went to Vicki Lawrence. Well, our, because we're talking about Cher, is it Cher? Exactly. <laughs> well, that was hard to figure out. <laughs> All right, what can I say? How crazy, though, that the next person they went to was Vicky Lawrence. Lawrence. Although I loved her singing that song, yeah, but like, was she... Song. Yeah, okay, cool. But anyway, that, um, was, that was my detour for the day. Great. Um, 
And we want to hear from all of our listeners and our watchers out there, those of you who are watching us on YouTube. And again, if you're not, get over there so you can see us, because it, it really is a shit show. So, Michael, how can people reach out to us? How can they find us and tell us what changes they're going through? So you can find us anywhere on social media under the moniker No Two Gays About It, and that is the number two. So no, the number two gays about it. Um, we are on Facebook and TikTok and threads and Instagram. And you could also hit us up on, uh, at Gmail. Send us a Gmail if you guys want to talk about something a little more private that you would like to hear on the show. We'd love to hear from you. And that's no two gays about it at gmail.com. And if you'd like to be a part of our family in another way, pop on over to Patreon and help support the show um, and become a member of the no two gays family. And what a family it is. Uh, great. All right. Great talking about change, Michael. Uh, embrace it. Keep moving forward. Uh, this has been awesome. And for all of you out there, also keep moving forward. Until next time, Michael. Until next time, Tom. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to explore the various and varied relationships of those of us gay men over 50, click like and subscribe so you too can join our conversation.